CF12. Tonight. There's been a lot of negative press on Bobby Brown. Bad boy Bobby Brown speaks out about his raunchy reputation and life with Whitney. It was our anniversary, you know, and we celebrated last night, so if you're wondering why my eyes look a little, you know, I'm kind of tired, you know. I maybe had an hour of sleep, but, you know, it was worth it. <laughs> You've heard the stories about their stormy marriage. Now get the truth. Exclusive, Bobby on Whitney. Julia Roberts breaks her silence about Lyle Lovett. How does that become positive? It just seems so painful to me. It's Julia Roberts at her most candid as she opens up about her marriage and the men in her life. Are you dating now? No. I said, well, I did get asked out by a stranger um, a few months ago. Julia, single and sassy. Tony Danza's big comeback. Uh, hey, Melody, don't take this the wrong way, but I think you're going to make a rotten crime report. I mean, you know, you're just not cynical enough. There's still something about him that people seem to like. From Tony to TV's newest friends, the experts give us a sneak peek at the fall season's hottest new shows. Tom Arnold ties the knot, and E.T. was there. Sly, Arnold, all the stars. The bridesmaids were wonderful, the little ring bearer boys. It was an awesome, beautiful ceremony. Find out why Matt LeBlanc is in a sweat. I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about a lot of things lately. This is Entertainment Tonight for Monday, July 24th, 1995. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Entertainment Tonight. I'm Julie Moran. Mary Hart has the day off. And I'm John Tesh, and the eyes of the nation are on Union South Carolina tonight as the jury decides whether Susan Smith should live or die. Now, we want to know what you think. You'll have a chance to vote in a special ET poll that's coming up. But first, bad boy Bobby Brown. If you read the tabloids at the checkout stand, the marriage of pop diva Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown is among the most stormy in showbiz. Brown is usually the strong, silent type, but we got him to open up about life with Whitney in an exclusive interview. There's been a lot of negative press on Bobby Brown. They created a bad boy. He was known as the bad boy of rhythm and blues. She was the Cinderella of pop. As man and wife, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown plunged straight into tabloid headlines. I was always taught that when they stop talking about you, that's when you worry. Action! On the set of the new comedy, Thin Line, directed by Martin Lawrence, we found a more serious Bobby Brown, who was very anxious to set the record straight. The lies are, you know, they hurt, but my wife knows me, my children know me, and that's all that really matters. And, uh, no matter what they think about me, I'm still the same man that entered this business 17 years ago. Over the years, Houston has had to endure Bobby's wild ways as played out in the press. Yet together, they've weathered all storms, including his arrest for aggravated assault in a Florida nightclub. In fact, they just finished a big celebration. Me and Mrs. and Mrs. Brown was our anniversary, you know, and we celebrated last night. So if you're wondering why my eyes look a little, you know, I'm kind of tired, you know. I maybe had an hour of sleep, but, you know, it was worth it. <laughs> Today, Bobby claims his bad boy days are not only over, but that he relishes being something entirely different, a role model to his three kids. It's up to everybody to be role models for their own, to teach them and mold them, shape them into a full human being. I know what I'm feeling, you know, and, and it's, it's happiness, and I'm just glad to still be alive today, you know. I, I praise God to, just to be alive. I'm thankful for that. So anything, anything else doesn't really matter to me. Whitney Houston has another reason to be happy today. A New Jersey judge has issued an injunction against the man who's been stalking her, ordering him to stay away forever. Tom Arnold took time out from his busy Hollywood movie-making schedule to walk down the aisle over the weekend, and he did it his way in his kind of town. Wayne County, Michigan may be best known for its state basketball champs, but this weekend it hosted its own wedding of the century, Tom Arnold and local girl Julie Champanella. She's getting fame, she's getting fortune, she's getting the whole package. And you always see limos go by, and you're like, wow, there's a limo. 
With half of Hollywood rumored to be on the guest list, local stargazers gathered round to try to get a first-hand look at their favorite celebrities. Sly, Arnold, all the stars. I was wondering, is Roseanne going to be here? Say you're excited to see Tom Arnold's wedding. <laughs> I couldn't resist coming here to see Arnold Schwarzenegger and, of course, the newlyweds and Bruce Willis. <laughs> he is here today, isn't he? No, that's not Bruce Willis. Sly and Arnold didn't make it either. According to a wedding guest, Tom's pal Chris Farley was about the only Hollywood type on hand. I did not see Bruce Willis or Sylvester Stallone. I didn't see any of them, but Chris Farley was there. He was cute. The bridesmaids were wonderful. The little ring bearer boys. It was an awesome, beautiful ceremony. And as the happy couple left for their honeymoon, one resident offered her opinion on the Arnold's future. Celebrities out in Hollywood, they're married six months, a year. Well, you know, is this going to last? That's the main thing. If it lasts, great. If it doesn't, too bad. Well, as the lady says, some show business marriages don't last forever. Actress Joanne Wally Kilmer has filed divorce proceedings against husband Val Kilmer, star of Batman Forever. She cites irreconcilable differences and seeks custody of their two children. Julia Roberts and Lyle Lovett are also among the Marriage Made in Heaven Now on the Rocks star duos. Now Julia speaks out about Lyle for the first time in an interview with Bob Goen. When things are just sort of mean and nasty for the sake of being mean and nasty, um, I think that's sort of unfair. This weekend, Julia Roberts broke her silence on the endless rumors surrounding her relationship with soon-to-be ex-husband Lyle Lovett. I can't offer you all the things that make it intriguing and mysterious and scandalous, you know, because it just is what it is. We're pals and we, um, you know, we will be regardless of, of our sort of status. I would just like to know if anybody else here has slept with my husband. <laughs> Julia's new film, Something to Talk About, deals with a marriage torn yeah, apart by infidelity. But she wants to make clear that her real life doesn't mirror this on-screen scenario with co-star Dennis Quaid. The parallels, obviously, in this film and what you were going through at the time in your own life, difficult to deal with? They weren't happening simultaneously, as everyone wants to believe, just because oh. I think it's interesting, you know, to think yeah. that I'm living and working the same yeah. life. The only similarity is they're both ultimately positive experiences for all people concerned. Really? Yeah. How does that become positive? It just seems so painful to me. Well, no, every, I mean, it sounds corny, but everything is what you make it, isn't it, you know? How so? I, mean, I, don't, I don't Well, understand. because, you know, we're very good friends, and we, you know, I mean, I talked to him this morning before I came here. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I mean, oh, so, great. we sort of laugh about uh, continuously, is that all these people that sort of from a week into the two of us being married were sort of slamming us and saying all these sort of bad things and saying, you know, in a year we've spent 10 days together and this, that, and the other. All yeah. the people saying, oh, they broke up. Isn't it? Oh, it just breaks your heart, you know. It's like, yeah, right. Yeah, stop. So it's amusing. So you have to take the humor element of it and sort of um, get on with it. Eddie. Eddie! I can see you! Oh, Daddy, yes! Yeah. Julia plays a mom in this film to newcomer Haley All, an occupation that Julia says she is nowhere near in real life. I love kids, but I don't, I don't really have any. Yeah, but no plans immediately <laughs> to have any. Any relationship now? I think probably a date first and then the child. <laughs> Isn't that how it Are goes? Are you dating now? <laughs> no. I said, well, I did get asked out by a stranger um, a few months ago uh, um, in a newsstand. A guy asked me if I wanted to go get coffee. and. And I said, well, no. <laughs> and uh, you nuts. well, then as I'm walking home with sort of nothing to do but laundry or something, I thought, well, maybe I should have gone. And I thought, what am I thinking? Yeah, now don't get any ideas, guys, because Julia is off to Ireland now to finish her next okay. movie, Michael Collins, but not without a kind word for me. The TV doesn't do you justice. You're so cute. I mean, not like I'm hitting on you because we were oh. talking about my lack of dating. <laughs> Ho, oh, be still my heart. Wow. <laughs> Julia Roberts lacking in dates. I think that's one of the signs of the apocalypse, don't you? Anyway, Julia confided in me that uh, even though her marriage to Lyle was a brief one, she said it was extremely intense and that it was a learning experience that she won't soon forget. She also says that she's blocked out much of the pain that she experienced during that split. And she also considers herself and Lyle very lucky that they've been able to remain friends even though the breakup was such a public one. They're nice people. She's a good lady. We wish them luck. That's it from New York. I'm Bob Goen for Entertainment Tonight. Now back to Hollywood. No he, question. She I is, think he's blushing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is hot for him. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. We'll be right back. Coming up on E.T., is Tony Danza about to be the hottest new thing on TV? We'll show you the hits and misses for the fall.
Then find out why the stars of Friends are still buzzing. What can we say? Who knew? We didn't expect it. I mean, we hope, but, you know, it's just very exciting. Plus, he rescued baby Jessica, and the media made Robert O'Donnell a hero, but was it really fame that killed him? And Susan Smith, is it life or death? Stand by the phones, we'll let you be the jury. Tomorrow on Entertainment Tonight, Sandra Bullock. She rode the bus to stardom. Now the world wants to know what's behind that million dollar smile. You have this reputation where you're so nice and so clean that people have to reach mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. dirt on you. Sandra comes clean about her good girl reputation. I'm sure I'm gonna do something really stupid sometime <laughs> soon, so let's not push it. <laughs> Exclusive, Sandra's Secrets, that's tomorrow. I was starting in a new school, so of course my face exploded. Soft, stretchy sides. So now, as we get more active, Pampers Stretch fits snug, so we can play in comfort. New Pampers Stretch, stretch in motion, play in comfort. Ooh, pretty car. Mazda 626 Kronos. No charge air, dual airbags, uh, AM, FM, cassette stereo, a 60-40 split pull-down rear seat, and Mazda's incredible five-year warranty. Looks like the best family sedan in Canada. Can I borrow it? Oh, come on. I'll let you use your clippers. Hurry for no charge air conditioning or equivalent value credit. Budweiser is proud to welcome Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi, August 2nd and 3rd at the Montreal Forum. Bon Jovi, a Donald K. Donald production in association with Budweiser. Budweiser, this Bud's for you. She enraged the nation when she lied that her two little boys had been kidnapped. Now Susan Smith stands convicted of murdering her two sons. This week, a jury will decide whether Smith will receive life in prison or, by South Carolina law, die in the electric chair. Emotions in her hometown are running strong. I'm hoping for death penalty. I'm not for the electric chair. How would you vote if you were on the jury? Here's your chance to decide in our exclusive ET phone poll. Should Smith be sentenced to die in the electric chair? Call 1-900-773-1199 if your answer is yes. Call 1-900-773-2299 if your answer is no. And we'll have the results for you tomorrow. Each call will cost you 50 cents and you must be 18 years old to take part. As in Susan Smith's case, the media beamed the story of baby Jessica and the man who rescued her to the world live. But Jessica's story had a happy ending, or so everybody thought. Now we discover that what happened to the hero who rescued baby Jessica is a case study in the high price of fame. Here she comes. There's clapping. For three days in 1987, Jessica McClure was every American's baby. Robert O'Donnell, who crawled into an eight-inch pipe to rescue her, was America's favorite son. He was on Nightline, he met George Bush, he was on Oprah, he didn't go to Oprah, Oprah came to Midland, he was on the cover of Life magazine, he was inside People magazine, he won more awards than he could fit eventually on his resume. Fame came quickly, but it left in a flash, and eight years after America embraced him, Robert O'Donnell committed suicide. Fame had become the addiction he couldn't kick. They identify with the media, with the glitz, with the glamour, with the limousines and the celebrities. And then when that's taken away, they're almost left with nothing. Ready? Action! For a time, it seemed that the story's fame, which even included this TV movie, could bring O'Donnell fortune. But this movie was a contributor to crippling depression. He was supposed to play a newspaper reporter. And uh, when the, uh, the, the show was aired on the, on the television, uh, they'd cut out his part. He was totally embarrassed. It was sort of the beginning of the end for him. The final reminder of how fame faded was TV coverage of the Oklahoma City tragedy. O'Donnell turned to his family and made a prophetic remark. Those people had a lot of help for a very long time. And it was two days after that that he shot himself. But the rescue teams of Oklahoma City had learned valuable lessons about the destructive side of fame. They consistently stressed how there were hundreds of heroes risking their lives in the rubble. Down in Texas, you had one or two people because of that confined space able to work, and that was all. 
So all that focus was on one or two people. In this case, we've got a thousand people that, that really, you know, paid a lot of dues inside that building, and we've got a much larger peer support network. The memory of Oklahoma City is still fresh in America's mind, but baby Jessica is already part of our past. That was just too much for Robert O'Donnell to bear. Baby Jessica's parents, Sissy and Chip McClure, may have also suffered from media overexposure. They bought a bigger house with some of the money that was donated after the accident, but within three years they were divorced. In the OJ trial, the prosecution introduced the bloody socks as evidence, but now the defense says they overlooked something big. The latest from the courtroom is headline news in today's ET Gazette. Were you asked to review results of a study performed by the FBI to determine whether there was EDTA present on blood stains found on a pair of socks? Yes. Today in the OJ case, testimony from the defense's toxicology expert raised more questions. How was a chemical found in laundry detergent discovered in only the blood and not also the fabric of the socks from OJ's bedroom? The defense contends that this testimony proves the socks were planted. I didn't know you were a trashy act. <laughs> Our own Mary Hart made a special appearance at the Jim Neighbors and Friends concert. Braving a constant rain, the crowd was treated to a special duet. Keanu Reeves kept the bass line thumping at the opening of the Hard Rock Cafe in South Carolina. While E.T.'s Bob Gowen didn't give the shirt off his back, just his jacket to Planet Hollywood in New York. The coveted E.T. jacket, one size fits all if you're real big. As if. As if. As if. As if. As if. Whatever. And audiences were clueless as Paramount's high school frolic Clueless romped into second place in its opening weekend at the box office. Nine months holds at number three, Under Siege 2 and Species in fourth and fifth places, and still orbiting high in the number one spot for the fourth week is Apollo 13. Now from hot movies to what's destined to be new and hot on television. We've got the official list of this fall's hits and misses, and we have two words for you, Tony Danza. E.T.'s Jerry Grant has the story. Uh, hey, Melanie, don't take this the wrong way, but I think you're going to make a rotten prime reporter. He drove a cab to stardom and cleaned up as a houseboy. Now will Tony Danza nab success as a cop in Hudson Street? I think there's, there's still something about him that people seem to like. Betsy Frank of Zenith Media says lightning will strike again for Tony. She rates the new shows every year and sees a trend in the new season. The frenzization of the schedule this year is happening big time. Frank says that of more than 20 new sitcoms, two with 20-something themes should hit big. Tell me what you think of these cards. I'm going to go out and grab some sex. Lunch. <laughs> Frank tells advertisers where to buy commercial time. And her top picks are two NBC shows, Caroline in the City, starring Leah Thompson, and The Single Guy. For what reason would anyone like her? Jonathan likes everybody. He's famous for it. I don't like this girl. I didn't find any real dogs on the schedule. I found some disappointments, but probably not as many dogs. Shots on Frank's list include the home court on NBC. This isn't the return counter at Marshall Fields. <laughs> CBS's Bonnie and the funky American Gothic. What should I wish for, Daddy? Salvation. Andrew Clay, who hasn't made many friends in the past, is getting his own sitcom, starring with Kathy Moriarty in Bless This House. Frank says the show could be successful. I have to warn you, I can't find my pills. I gotta warn you, that's not gonna work a third time. <laughs> Frank also sees possibilities in CBS's steamy soap opera Central Park West. If Not For You, also on CBS, and ABC's Murder One, where the entire season is spent on a single criminal case. <laughs> Last season, Frank chose Friends and ER as fan favorites. Now with both at the top of the ratings, she says only time will tell what the next super hit will be. You don't know when a show is just going to come along and break onto the scene and capture um, the country the way those two programs have done. Now, once you get that big hit show, the next step would be an Emmy, right? Well, not if you're comedian Dennis Miller. Today, the Television Academy took away Miller's nomination for hosting HBO's Dennis Miller Live. Somebody didn't read the fine print. The rules say you can't be nominated in the variety or music program category if your name is in the title. Miller says, no big deal. Now Barbara Streisand can sleep better. She's also nominated in that category. Julie.
Thanks a lot, Jerry. Next, friend star Matt LeBlanc. He's a hunk on TV's hottest show. So why does this guy have the jitters? Tomorrow on Entertainment Tonight... There's absolutely nobody like her. He's a sexy Baldwin brother. She's his real-life leading lady. And there was something really kind of almost chemical that happened when, when we first met each other. Now William Baldwin and China Phillips are about to tie the knot, and E.T. has the exclusive. We are full-blown making plans right now. Baldwin and his bride, plus... It's an NYPD red-hot and blue summer. Action! From Dennis Franz to Jimmy Smits, the cops are walking a new beat in the heat. I enjoy sweating to death, and I enjoy forgetting my lines. We've got the All Points Bulletin on an NYPD summer. That's tomorrow. Here are the stars celebrating birthdays this Monday, July the 24th. Actress Anna Paquin is 13. Actor Kadeem Hardison, 30. Seinfeld's Michael Richards is 46 today. Actor Robert Hayes is 48. And actor Chris Sarandon is 53. Don, you're too shy. You've got to open up. Those are guaranteed to go like lightning at your local Chrysler dealer. Craven A Limite, proud of Craven A Limite. Presentation. This is a rare Apollo and aroma that defy description. <laughs> Unexpected heroes. What would make an ordinary middle class guy put aside his gardening to disarm a sniper? A homemaker track down and wrestle a mugger to the ground. What would impel an ordinary worker to enter a tunnel of poisonous gas? Across Canada, ordinary people are performing extraordinary acts of courage. Join host John Vernon each week for the compelling true stories of unexpected heroes. Tuesday at 7.30 on CFCF 12. Jennifer Aniston and Matt LeBlanc from Friends were among a group of stars who turned out for the Television Critics Awards this weekend, and they were still jazzed about the Emmy nominations for their show. It's very exciting. We didn't expect it. I mean, we hope, but, you know, it's just very exciting. I'm very proud of Lisa and David, and it's just going to be a fun night. The ever-cool Matt LeBlanc said the excitement of the Emmy nominations has proven to be a bit unsettling for him. I've never been a part of anything like this before. Uh... I'm nervous about going to the show. I'm going to do Jay Leno next week, and I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about a lot of things lately. But it'll be all right. The Emmy show airs September 10th on Fox. We'll take a break. Be right back. Who says bigger isn't better? And they're hurrying to call those biggest sale of the season. For 52 stores to serve you best. If it's not... This summer, Universal Pictures takes you to a world unlike any you've ever seen. Waterworld. Starts Friday, July 28th at theaters everywhere. Production assistance furnished by Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines invites you to experience Disneyland's greatest ride ever, the new Indiana Jones Adventure. And the best way to start your vacation is with Delta. You'll love the way we fly. We are wrapping things up today in Columbia Falls, Montana. None other than Mary Hart joins Jim Neighbors on stage at his outdoor concert. Enjoy it. See you later. Have a good one. Homer pays a big price to keep Selma and Patty from talking next on The Simpsons. It's the frantic fun of Seinfeld, Thursday at 9.